Hey, check this out. We got a monitor unit chamber. Let me get my recording. Perfect. Okay, so this is this is a monitor unit chamber that came out of a Linac. Um, you can see it's got tons of hookups. It's the gas is sealed off there. Um, looks like it's largely made out of copper and some sort of mylar plastic. I really don't know what it is. This is sealed at the factory. And let's quickly compare it to this other monitor chamber from a very old machine. Look at that, this one's broken. Here, look at that. It's very similar, right? It's some sort of, I'll touch this one. This one's some sort of mylar plastic in here. It's got a whole bunch of hookups for different coaxial cables to get the signal out and the voltage in um, to run these monitor unit chambers off of. Um, I think this is funny too, one side's labeled patient side, and then the other one's labeled target side, so you don't forget which way to put in your monitor unit chamber. So, um, an interesting thing about the monitor chamber is that they are ionization chambers. I think these run at about 500 volts. They sit up high in the Linux, so you have your target, your primary collimator, um, and then below that you'll have your monitor chamber. There are um, different layers to the monitor chamber. You'll get MU1 reading out of it, and MU2 reading out of it. So two independent readings out of the monitor unit chamber. Um, those two readings are compared one to the other. If MU1 doesn't agree with MU2, within a certain tolerance, the beam gets shut off. Um, another thing that the monitor unit chamber does is that it measures the symmetry of the beam. So the chamber will be split up you'll have two different sides to it inside there so inside here are two d-shaped collectors one's going this way and then in the other layer you'll have one going the other way and if the reading from one side the left side to the right side to the upper to the lower if they get off a little bit it knows that the beam is not flat anymore and it'll shut the beam off and then it can also um, measure the symmetry of the beam. I'm less familiar with how the symmetry is done, but you'll get some sort of um, collector that's like this. Oops, I drew that wrong. Um, a collector that's like this, and then one that's like, you may get a D in the middle, so it'll collect charge here and here. Um, I'm sorry, it'll collect charge on the outer ring and compare it to the inner to see if the um, charge reading is consistent there it'll tell it if it's um, still flat so you can get from the monitor unit chamber you can get an estimate of whether the thing is running correctly how many MU's monitor units went out of the beam if monitor unit 1 is off MU2 will tell you it can tell you if your beam um, symmetry is correct left to right and then it'll can tell you if your beam flatness is correct by measuring kind of like an outer ring charge measurement to an inner ring charge measurement. Um, one thing you may notice, so if you look at this one, this one got this one got damaged, but before it got damaged, this is what we would call an unsealed chamber. So this chamber um, can have gas go into and out of it over its lifetime, and it's designed to fluctuate with atmospheric pressure. Um, contrast that with this one. I think if you look at this one on edge, let me stand up so I can see. I think you can see this is bulging out a little bit. Can you tell that this is bulging out? This is overpressurized. This monitor unit chamber is overpressurized. It's sealed at the factory. So they put gas in here. They pressurize it over atmospheric pressure. They seal it at the factory. They put it in the machine and they ship it to you. And the reason why they do that is because when they do it this way, they don't have to worry about changes in atmospheric pressure and temperature, changing the number of gas molecules inside this chamber during its lifetime. So you don't have to worry about what atmospheric pressure is. This machine can run. The gas molecules inside this monitor chamber are the exact same ones that were there when the machine shipped. So if you have a machine that's like 15 years old, the gas that was inside that when it was shipped is the exact same gas that's in there now. Um, the advantage being that they don't have to correct for that when the machine's running, the machine just runs. Then the question being, okay, so they sealed it, so why overpressurize it, right? Why put more gas in there 
and this thing is probably overpressurized by maybe 10 or 20 percent um, and the reason being is because it is possible for these things to lose their seal and they could be fluctuating with atmospheric pressure but if they overpressurize it and you calibrate and set up your linac using this overpressurized chamber if you come in one morning and that pressure seal was lost the machine output is going to change a great deal right the number of gas molecules that are inside this and are going to ionize um, will go down drastically when you do the morning qa it will fail like if your morning output is off by 10 or 20 percent that machine's not going to pass morning qa it's not going to pass monthly qa you're going to know immediately that that chamber is no longer sealed and so um, you know it's a really good safety check that the machine is operating properly with this sealed ion chamber so that that is a modern uh, modern unit chamber used to control radiotherapy beams.